No secret. Okay, so we're going to play one, two, three videos, and then you're going to show three things that you're working on. Some of these things are part of our new products tonight that you were doing some testing on, whatever. Yeah, and then, see behind the scenes. And then we're going to, yeah, and then we're going to show you some of the stuff we're working on. So there it goes. How related was this? This is a Ryo RA8875. This is a very cool chip. It does SPI to 40 pin TTL up to 800 by 480 resolution 16 bit um you know of course it's not super fast because uh spi just isn't as fast as eight uh three uh, sorry 24 bit parallel um but it is great if you want to just control these large displays from something as simple as a uh, 324 or 328 but of course other chips work as well and um with the revision this backlight driver got discontinued sorry this backlight driver so I had to um, redo the board anyways. This is now a SOT89, not a SOT235. And so while I was there, I also made a couple other updates. Uh, and now I'm testing it. It's uh, backwards compatible. So you see the touch screen and color works. And now there's a three state on the uh, serial output pin uh, as requested about a year ago. So revision coming to the Adafruit shop real soon. All right, Lady Ada, we're here at the Adafruit factory with our kiddo doing electronics wub, at wub, night. Wub. What's, uh, what's this? Okay, hot off the Wub Wub uh, press. This is a panel of the new Matrix Portal S3. Uh, it features an ESP32 S3 module, and there's no um, SAMD51. It's just the S3 driving a portal. And uh, it's got, uh, sorry, the Matrix. It's got headers on the back to plug directly, and also IDC on the top for a cable. But it's still the same size, USB-C, stem QT, pins, level shifters, uh, Neopix and all that. So these are going to get tested and put into the Adafruit shop. So it'll be cool. It'll be a less expensive, more powerful version of the Matrix Portal. Big upgrade. Early data, what is this? First you get the pen. <laughs> then you get the tester. <laughs> then you get the power. All right. Then you get the Matrix Portal S3. Uh, this is our uh, S3 based uh, Matrix Portal version. Got rid of the SAMD51, driving the Matrix directly, and you've got uh, both socket and plug style uh, connectors for the panels. And here's my tester using my RP2040 brains. Um, I love this because I don't need to use a separate computer Raspberry Pi. It's really fast, and it programs it over USB. And then it does like a Wi-Fi scan. It tells me to press the buttons. I press the buttons and it's like, test done. This was pre-programmed, so it only took 12 seconds. And then, if I can do this fast, remove, remove, plug this in, and then hit reset. And one of the coolest things is that this programs in a... Uh, a live demo so when people get it it comes ready to go um, it also does a wi-fi scan and i squared c scan so it's a good hardware test uh so this is coming to the shop soon just wrap this tester handy yes Bam. So is our kiddo. Um, I clicked off of it too fast on accident. <laughs> um, so this is the modified player, it plays prints and stuff like that. And uh, that's the toy hacker board. What is this you're working on? Um, I finally got a reel of Max 31328. These are real-time clock chips that are um, not pin compatible, but they are firmware compatible with the DS3231. Um, so, uh, which is kind of weird. It's like 3132 is 3231. So, um, we'll be able to have this breakout board. It's a little bit less expensive than the DS and physically smaller. Um, it has more capabilities. So, it sounds like Maxim was like, well, we're going to keep this uh, compatibility with this very popular real time clock, but maybe update the process to be, you know, a more modern process. And then um, this is a USB MUX chip um, that somebody pointed out to me. Um, it allows you to switch between two USB ports using a GPIO, and it's electrical switching. So, you know, used in la laptops and devices, but could be a very handy breakout board. And this, uh, coming back from uh, 2020, this is the ICN 6211 uh, prototyping board, um, originally designed with a SAMD21E18. I'm going to redo this design a little bit. 
but uh, just to get started, I've uh, refabricated it in you know, the same layout. Um, and it's a DSI to TTL TFT converter. So you have single board Linux computers that have a DSI port, um, but you know you don't want to necessarily program each um, DSI display, or maybe you have old style TTL TFT displays. Uh, you can plug this in, and this you know over I squared C, you tell it what the size is and the front porch and the back porch is, and H sync, and it um, does it for you. And also got a backlight there, so hopefully we'll be able to convert. Um, common 15 pin DSI to 40 pin TFT displays at a reasonable cost. Top secret.